Hello and welcome to Bobby Gaming. I'm your host, the Below Average Gamer. Today we're talking about something that I am really excited about, and that is the Justice League. Now, you may or may not have seen my other videos talking about the Batman vs. Superman movie, my first thoughts on it, my second thoughts on it, my third thoughts on it, all sorts of stuff. There's all sorts of videos there. Check them out. Um, they're pretty easily listed. Um, but yeah, you, you saw those. We all saw those. We're really excited. We're all huge fans. We all commented, liked, and subscribed. But um, today I'm going to talk about something else. The other members of the Justice League, the ones that most likely will not be getting a movie and um, my, my dream cast for those characters, because I love the entire idea of the Justice League. It's where the idea for the Avengers came from. So if you love the Avengers, you actually love the Justice League. There are no sides here. I mean, all characters are copied one from the other. But let's just go ahead and hop right into it. First off, I want to start with some of the big characters. Um, we're going to start off with the Atom. The Atom is one of my favorite characters. The ability to shrink down to, um, well, an Atom, pretty much. Really small, really small guy, and I think that um, if he were to be cast in the movie, somehow I think Adam Cho, sorry, not Adam Cho, John Cho would play the Adam. <laughs> I think that he's a really good character. He really gets that serious, dead-eyed stare like, I am doing this because it is for the sake of science, I am doing this because I am a hero, it is what I am meant to do, type thing down. Yes, I do love the character um, on Legends of Tomorrow. I think that it's a fantastic character. I love the suit, but I think... Um, John Cho would be a lot better in the traditional suit. He's a great character. I think that that's a great actor to play him in every sense of the word. I mean, I, I can't think of... I'm looking at his picture right now, and I'm like, I can't help but stare into his eyes. He has that nice little happy smirk. You see it there on the screen. I'll probably have it up right now. I just can't help but just get lost in his, his, his joyous face. But yeah, I think the Adam, big character, really good character. I think that John Cho would absolutely destroy that role, just in a good way, in the best way possible. He would he would forever be the incarnation of the Atom. Um, next up, I want to talk about another character, probably one of the more important and influential characters of the Justice League, if not the most influential character of the Justice League, and that is Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter would be very difficult to cast. Um, there's a lot of characters who would be really good with him. I'm going to say that Benicio Del Toro would probably make the best choice, in my opinion. Again, he was the collector in um, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think that he is just a fantastic actor, first off. Second off, um, he, he really is a good at playing that very alien, very obscure character. And um, at the same time, he can really go above and beyond to play that little little tiny twinge of humor, like, like with the Martian Manhunter and his love of cookies. Um, I think that that would be a really fun character to see him play. He, like I said, he's he can go from serious to just like it's it's like how funny he can be at times is shocking and it's gonna shock you every time. Doesn't matter, just that face, that stare, that eye contact that he has, and just the the ability that he has to fully encompass a character who's so alien and so depraved and far away. Um, it is just, I think that he would be the best character, the best actor to play Martian Man Hunter. Um, I don't have anything more to say about that. I think that he's great. And like I said, every time the Martian Manhunter does do those little things, that's like, oh, right, you don't understand how humans work. And it's kind of funny. It's going to be shocking to have Benicio Del Toro be that character. Next up is Hawkman and Hawk Girl. Um, Hawkman, I think that we can all agree that the person playing the um, pretty much the intergalactic cop should be Jason Statham. He's terrifying. He's an action star. He's uh, just this big encompassing character that uh, people are terrified of. Scary. Hawkman and, and Jason Statham, both all together. I think they're both characters and an actor who people not fear, but they respect at such a huge level. He's really good at being these characters that just command respect. Um, I, I can't think of him playing a character who isn't just intense. And playing a character who is seen as kind of the intergalactic cop is great. He's really intense, and just to have him going up against someone like um, Vandal Savage would be amazing. I mean, we've seen him fight in movies, we've seen him kill in movies, I mean, he's a terrifying dude, and that's the whole point of Hawkman, is that he is just this big, scary creature, those giant wings, that big, bulking armor, just a terrifying creature. Um, and I think that in order to have Hawk Girl be someone who can stand up against him, <coughs> excuse me, you would have to have someone who's equally as powerful, someone who commands respect in that same manner. And I think Charlize Theron could definitely play that character of Hawk Girl. My reference for this is if you look at the movie Hancock, 
um, with her and Will Smith, I think that that character that she plays there is Hawk Girl 100%. She, she, like I said, she commands respect. She is scary, dangerous, and she's one of the few actresses or actors that I think could stand next to Jason Statham. And you honestly, there is no leader. It is just a, a dynamic duo at its finest. And I think that they would both be really well. She is a little bit more down to earth, a little bit more sarcastic, has a little bit more to her than he does, where he's just the flat surface because he, in, in, in the lore of the characters, knows who he is. He, he knows for a fact what his role is in the universe. And she is kind of uh, trying to figure it out. Yeah, she does get it later in the series, but I think for the sake of JLA's beginning, I think she needs to be that character who is still connected to the Earth. And I think her character from Hancock, as well as her character in general, are both the the, the, in, the incarnation of that idea, of that mentality, that she can be this big, powerful character who's still grounded to Earth. Um, next, we're going to go jump onto someone who is... Um, another one of my favorite characters. They may not be one of the top characters in Justice League, but they are one of my favorite characters. And if they do go as far as to get to this character in the JLA, a lot of these characters, I understand they're not going to get to, that there's no point. But I think that if I had to dreamcast them, this is who they're going to be. So um, my next one is for Red Tornado, one of my absolute favorite DC characters. Just the idea, and, and, and the reason, let me just say, the reason that he's one of my favorites has to be because of Brian Prosane's portrayal of him in Brave and the Bold. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in Brave and the Bold, he was played as this cyborg, and he actually is uh, a, uh, a robot connect ugh, invented by Dr. Ivo. And uh, I just, I love him. He's great, he's amazing, he's intimidating, but he's also very, very funny in that same, that same vein that Martian Manager is, in that he just does not understand humanity. And I think if we're going to pick a character who is funny by their not understanding of humanity and someone who can play this inhuman character to a T, it's going to be Vin Diesel. Now hear me out. I don't want him playing Groot. I want him playing the Iron Giant. I and mean, if you haven't seen the Iron Giant, it's this ability to emote so much through just a monotone voice. And Vin Diesel has already shown us that. If you can just look at look at an image of Red Tornado and listen to the audio of um, Iron Giant and tell me that those do not sync up perfectly. Fantastic. He's a character who doesn't understand humanity. A character who does who who has a great longing and wanting to be human. But he, he doesn't know how, and he doesn't think he can. And I think that that would be fantastic. If they use his face, if they don't use his face, I wouldn't care. He's not going to really have to shave his head very much. But I think that whole idea, and that, that if they were to bring it in to the storyline, the way that they did in Avengers um, Age of Ultron, where he's just this idea that eventually manifests itself into a human shape, I think that would be amazing. I would, I, like, I, I, I would run to the theater right now if they announced it. If they announced it, I would be first in line at the theater to grab my ticket. Because first off, I love Red Tornado, and second off, I think Vin Diesel could play that character to a T. Okay? Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't know anyone else who could play that character. Next up, I want to talk about Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate is known as one of the most powerful characters in the DC Universe. He's magic, he's all-encompassing, he's omnipotent, he is Dr. Fate. And in order to have a character that powerful, you need someone who is that powerful on their own. Um, Hugh Laurie, I think, is would be the best Doctor Fate. Imagine just Hugh Laurie's voice echoing through on that dark magic, reciting those incantations, and just just being that scare, just a scary character. He's a character that you you look at and you don't know whether he is a good guy or a bad guy, and he really doesn't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. He's not fighting for either side. He's fighting to keep control in the world, in the universe. And I think he would be a fantastic character for that. He's very um, straight to the point, direct. If you've seen him in House, you understand exactly what I'm getting at. Maybe not so much funny and not so much sarcastic, but he is very to the point, very straightforward. And I think if he were to play Dr. Fate, he should play the, Zat the Zatara version of Dr. Fate. Because, um, like I said, he needs to be someone who's into that cantation, who understands fate to its fullest potential. Um, and I think... Dr. Fate, Zatara, Hugh Laurie, this combination of the three would be fantastic. And I think it'd be a great storyline to have Zatara become Dr. Fate in front of his daughter. Now, now that I've brought up his daughter, Zatanna, um, she's another character on my list. I think that if they were to do that whole storyline, it would be something amazing. I, I, I can't just, I can't wrap my mind around it, how amazing that would be. Just the idea of Zatanna, his daughter, watching her father have to choose to save the world and lose his humanity in the process. He loses his his world, he loses his daughter, he loses his family, he loses 
everything that he's been grasping onto, Zatanna, is Zatara, sorry, is always looked at as the the um, just wanting to protect his daughter, wanting to be there for her. And I think the idea that he has to give that up, his daughter, and watching her grow up, and all these things, so that he can save her and protect her as well as the rest of the world, I think would be great. And I think Hugh Laurie could definitely play that character. As for Zatanna, I would want Mila Kunis to play that character, absolutely. Because she can play that tortured soul. I mean, we, we've seen her do it in, like, in Black Swan. We've seen her play that character who is just has this weight of the world on her, but at the same time is so confident in what she can do. I think that she would, would, would dominate this character. It would be fantastic. And the good news is, I, I've found this picture, and obviously I'm not the only one who wants to see her as Zatanna. I mean, uh, apart from seeing her in the costume. I mean, that's mainly the reason that we're doing this. <clears throat> but I, I also think that she could really play that character. She's not only looks the part, I think that she has the personality to play that character really well. I think that she is is 100% Zatanna. And Hugh Laurie playing her dad as Zatara would be fantastic. Now we're getting into kind of the more obscure characters. Not, not really obs like super obscure, but they're not the top billing as normal. So I want to get into, um, while we're into these storylines and stuff that could happen, I want to get into these characters of the original Blue Beetle, New Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold, and how that could work. Blue Beetle, the original, and Booster Gold worked together a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and get into those. Because if they were to go a movie that was Blue Beetle, that was a Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, like, buddy movie, I think it'd be funny, like, so funny. Um, now hear me out on this one, I'm going to talk about Booster Gold. I don't want you to run away, don't hit the pause button, don't close the window, don't do, don't do any of that stuff because I'm going to suggest this and I know your first thoughts are going to be we already gave him a chance with a DC movie and it didn't work out anywhere near what we wanted. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think that the best booster gold is going to be Ryan Reynolds. Don't touch the button. Don't touch the button. Please do not close the window. Don't pause it. Don't do any of that. Just listen. Hear me out, please. Booster gold, if you don't know the story, is a security guard in the future. I don't know exactly. I think it's the 25th century. But um, he's really into superheroes of the 21st century. That's where he was the security guard at the museum. He ends up stealing all the stuff from the museum, like the, the special technology, going back and uh, trying to become a superhero in our time period. He's really full of himself. He's one of the only superheroes there with like a publicist. And he's like trying to always get, get there in time to be the star and to be the main attraction. And uh, he knows it. I mean, he, he's, he's not altogether, you know responsible but but he knows that he is the star of the show and he knows that he truly is the only one who could save the world and that kind of gives him a little big headed now i think if we had a story like that where he is this character who's really big headed and really doesn't care this van wilder character haha see what i did there um i think that if we had him with an older blue beetle uh martin freeman i think would be a fantastic character because he's very sympathetic we've seen him in the hobbit and he just he touched our hearts and he pulled on our heartstrings and he squeezed everything out of there to get us to love that character and want that character to win because he's just such an innocent guy. I think if we had him as the original Blue Beetle in this duo, first off, I think that Martin Freeman and Ryan Reynolds could play off each other in the most iconic of superhero portrayals ever. Can you just imagine a conversation between Martin Freeman's character of Blue Beetle and Booster Gold's character, Ryan Reynolds? It would go down in history as the best. I don't care what you're thinking of the Avengers, Batman versus Superman, or whatever, or Civil War. This would be the best duo ever. Just to have a conversation there of one guy who's super innocent and thinks the world is the best thing ever, and he just needs to save people, and he loves his job, and a guy who's doing it just for the money, just for the publicity, just so he could be a celebrity. Those two characters. Now, here's where the story would kind of take a turn. Here's where everything would kind of collapse in on itself. Um, for those of you who don't know, in the comic books, the original Blue Beetle does die. And when he dies, an artifact is left behind that is discovered by a new Blue Beetle. And I think that if we could have Jake T. Austin play that Blue Beetle, the new one. Um, first off, Blue Beetle, the new one, is heavily into his heritage, his Hispanic heritage. I think Jake T. Austin really carries that with him in all of his roles, is that Hispanic heritage. We've seen him on a lot of shows. Um, I think that him being like, he, we've seen him be the dumb little brother in Wizards of Waverly Place, and we've seen him in Switched at Birth. I think it's, no, it's not Switched at Birth. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the show. <clears throat> the Fosters. We've seen him in The Fosters be that character who, again, a character who has the weight of the world on their shoulders and is just weighed down with so much on their heart. That character, we've seen him be both those characters, and I think if we mix those together and we just get Jake T. Austin 
to play that as the Blue Beetle, someone who does not know what they're doing, but because of all this stuff going on, they have to pretend to know what's happening in their world. They have to pretend to be in control of their own emotions, in control of their own their own power. I think that'd be great. And then to have Booster Gold, um, Ryan Reynolds, evolve into that character that has to be the big brother, who has to be a little bit more responsible in that same vein, in that same series, and take Blue Beetle under his wing a little bit more. I think that would be great. I think that'd be not only a great storyline, or a great basis for a storyline, but I think that it would be another great dynamic, because we'd see this dynamic of uh, Martin Freeman and Ryan Reynolds becoming friends and becoming this just great buddy comedy with Martin Freeman just pulling at our heartstrings, making us love him as a character, as an actor, as a human being, have that torn away, and then we have to see Booster Gold, Ryan Reynolds, take the reins and say, I have to be the adult now. I have to raise this kid, not raise him, but I have to teach this kid how to be a real hero and how to understand that not having the answers to everything doesn't mean that you're wrong. But I think that'd be a great little idea. Little, keep that in your head. When they go around asking surveys for what to do for the next movie, just tell them that. It'll be great. You know, you'll, they'll be excited. Everyone's going to just love you for it, okay? Um, I want to move on to another one. My, my final, my final um, pick and this one, I think, is the best to go into that world of Batman versus Superman. Is uh, Plastic Man. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Plastic Man used to be Kite Man. He was a, a Batman villain. Very obscure Batman villain, Kite Man. And in the in the comics, in the TV shows, and all the portrayals, he's a young younger dude. And uh, I think in this incarnation, he should be a little bit older. He should be someone who's had their time as a villain, someone who's stolen a lot, someone who's taken a lot of things for granted in the world. And I think if we could get someone who is a little bit older, who's at that same level of Batman, a little bit under that same level of Batman, if not relatively near him, his age, um, I think that'd be great because we have someone who has that dynamic of, I used to hate you and now we're friends and I'm learning from you. I think that would be great. And that's what I think, okay, I'm going to say this and you're not going to agree with me, I know for a fact. But you need to think about it for a second. I think that Jim Carrey could play Plastic Man. Because Plastic Man is this sarcastic, this funny, this witty character. Who's not only, like, funny like, physically as a character, but intellectually. You know, he's someone who can pitch his wit against Batman. And, uh, and, and just tell the jokes like they are, you know? And he'd be not just the humor, because I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, oh, you're just throwing him in there to be the humor of the team. No, I'm throwing him in there because I feel like he would be someone who could who could literally, like, all these heroes who are like, I'm so big and bad, he could tear them apart with just his wit and just his, his sarcasm towards their powers, towards them as people. And with him being Jim Carrey, someone who is a little bit older than, um, like, the, the Red Tornado character or the Atom or these other characters, I think that him being that character is someone who it's like, do we look up to this guy? He's a little bit, he's, he's a little bit older, he's a little bit grizzled, but uh, at the same time, like, he knows what he's talking about. He, you know, he's, he's into this whole thing. And it would be that whole thing of, like, is he really dedicated to this team? He could be a danger, but is he really dedicated to this team? Is he someone that we can trust? And I think that would be really cool to see. I think mean, that'd be fantastic to see him as a character, as Plastic Man. You know, he, he's already that character. Uh, he's Jim Carrey is already the Plastic Man. But to have him embody that character of someone who's funny, witty, and is just all around like, I don't know, it's just such a complex character when you think about it. Yeah, he's the funny guy, but at the same time, he was a villain. He's someone that like, yeah, he's funny, he's cool to be around, he's great, but still, he's a danger. We don't know if we can fully trust him. And I think, going back to that same plotline with the Blue Beetle and everything, he could be someone that, you know, uh, Jake T. Austin's character of the Blue Beetle, uh, Jaime Reyes, thinks, you know, this guy's funny, this guy's cool. He wasn't there to experience him as a villain, but he thinks this guy is really cool, this guy deserves a chance. And that could be that one in, that it's like, you know, if this little kid, not little kid, but if this kid can count on Plastic Man, then maybe the world can too. And, you know, that's, that's just what I'm thinking. This is my list of characters of my, my dream cast if I were to do the JLA. Um, I didn't include Aquaman because they're already cast as a real character and it's too hard to tear them away from that. Same thing with like Flash, um, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, obviously all those characters are already, and Cyborg, I'm sorry. Um, but all those characters are already uh, put into that universe. If I were to rebuild that universe from scratch, that'd be very different. I don't think that I could, but these characters, I think that these storylines could totes my goats fit into that. And uh, these characters, I think, 
could really change the world. It's an all-star cast, really it is. It's an all-star cast of, of characters here. But I think that that really fits into that JLA, um, Batman versus Superman universe. These characters I picked because I, I like that was my one thing, was could these characters all fit in that universe? Could they stand beside Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman and hold their own? And I think these characters with these actors and actresses really could. I think they really could. I didn't include Green Lantern because I know that movie's coming out soon. Um, I didn't include Shazam because I know that that movie's already casted or whatever, what's going on with that. I tried not to include ones that already had um, futures as movies. So these are some other ones. If you liked what these were, if you liked these ideas, let me know in the comments below. If you have someone who you think could play one of these characters better, let me know. Um, if you have um, compliments, grievances, whatever, comment below. Like, subscribe, please. That way I can know what's going on with the channel. Helps me stay in the loop of what you guys want to see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know? Um, if I have to say anything else, I would say I would want Buona Beast to be played by Idris Elba because I think that he's the only one cool enough to make that character cool. Can you just imagine like a character like Buona Beast that has the ability to mix two animals together, fuse them into one, and like if you could make him cool, here's a picture of the guy. This is what he looks like. Um, if you could make him cool, if anyone could, I think it would be Idris Elba. That's my one, that's my last thing. If anyone could make Buona Beast cool again, I think that it would be Idris Elba. And I just, uh, pff, I'm, I'd be surprised if he did not. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I appreciate you as a human being. And you the best. Bye.